Hey everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a makeup comparison for the 1940s. So comparing a traditional sort of style makeup, I'm going to be talking about the history and the techniques, and then a modern interpretation of the 1940s makeup. So you know, the 40s are defined by sort of a more smoky, smouldery eye. You didn't have the winged eyeliner yet. The lashes were long and luscious and the lips were wide. So stay tuned to find out more about the different sides. I'll be doing step by step each side so you can really see the differences. So first I'm going to start by prepping my face. I've just washed it and so I'm just going to moisturize now with some Aveeno. Now because this is a 1940s style and we want to get a lot of glow on the face, I'm just going to pop some oil on it just to get the hydration and sort of that look we're after. Just a little bit. Just to really bring that hydration look into the face. I'm a little bit under the weather at the moment, as you might be able to tell. Um, so I do apologise for my enormous eye bags. Um, they're a little bit ridiculous today, but hopefully we'll be able to cover that up soon. So I don't have any sort of like pan or cake foundation as would have been traditionally used. Um, I've just moved overseas so I've got really not as much of my makeup as I usually would. The closest thing I think I've got which will mimic the sort of colour and finish of it is the Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Foundation. It's pretty full coverage but still fairly natural and I think the undertone is not too unusual for the time as well. But they would have applied this with just a small beauty sponge or their hands so I think I'm going to use my hands for this one just to get a better finish. Um, all I've got at the moment to apply foundation is a regular sort of beauty sponge thing which I don't really feel like I want to do for this one. We'll see how this goes though because I haven't applied foundation um, with my hand for years, it used to be all what I did, but um, might not go too well, so. As you can see it does look pretty intense just because of my general skin tone um, and discoloration issues. Um, but you know if you compare this to sort of my neck it's not too off and it is shearing out. A stippling motion really helps um, when you're doing your foundation with the fingers I find just because especially with such a liquid foundation it can become very smeary very quickly. Make sure to tap into the nose and under the eye. Now I'll just take that under the neck just to blend it out a bit. So this is sort of the base for the 1940s side. Um, I'm not sure if you can tell but it's definitely not full coverage by any stretch. Um, you can see some of my freckles and a bit of my under eye circles still coming through there. Um, but you know, they weren't beat for the gods or anything in the 1940s. Um, so for the modern side I will be taking um, a more full coverage approach of course and I will be doing concealer. So recently I've been using this Illamasqua Skin Base Foundation. Um, it's not completely full coverage which isn't my ideal but it's got quite a nice finish and um, the colour is spot on, spot on. I don't have to do any mixing with this one which I usually do have to with other ones. Again, I know especially in this lighting, it's looking very extreme to my actual face, but I promise I'm not just, you know, walking around with some sort of ghost face on. I mean a little bit sometimes, but... <laughs> Making sure to get right back beside the ear, that's such a classic problem I have, is forgetting to do this little bit here. This does oxidise by the way as well, so while it's looking like a very stark half and half right now, it won't sit in. 
So now they didn't really have concealer or anything in the 1940s, which is why I've just done a flat base here. Um, the type of uh, pancake foundations I was talking about earlier, they are very buildable style. So you could get something so light, especially if you were using like a more moisturizing product, or you can get them to be very heavy and very full. And I just like to dot a little bit more around my face um, because I have some really dark freckles and the Alamasca foundation doesn't quite cover it. I sort of do my modern variation on the 1940s makeup pretty regularly as an eye look in my daily life. Um, I find it just easier than, you know, always doing a big winged liner or something like that. So that's fairly well concealed, definitely under the eye, not really seeing much circle. There is a bit of a shadow, but I just tend to normally get that because my under eyes are quite sunken. And as you can see, this lighting is not exactly ideal. Um, I think it'll be alright for this video though. Right, so from this we are going to move on to the eyes, so I will be zooming you in. Right, so here we are, a little closer to the eyes, and I will start, you know, talking through, demonstrating the eye look. So we'll do the traditional side first. Um, there's a few different sort of looks you can do for the 1940s. A nice pastel shadow is always an option. Um, similar to my 1950s ones, just a soft blue wash or a soft lilac wash, also very gorgeous. Um, a pale yellow can work as well on some skin tones. One quite popular look was having quite a light eyelid and then doing like a little bit of a shadow sometimes. Um, just taking like a nude sort of thing doing a wash across and um, what I'm going to be doing is a soft brown all over the eye that's just my absolute favorite look you know it's got a bit of that smoky smoldery 1940s look but it's not too yeah it's not too soft it's not too hard I really like it so I'm going to be taking this quite light brown shade here from the Pat McGrath Mothership 5 palette and just as I said simple wash just tapping out the creases here from my foundation. Tap out those under eye ones as well and with quite a fluffy brush I'm just going in very softly, very light touch, just a hint of colour. Now it's coming off quite intense on camera. Um, I can promise in real life it is a lot softer might just be because of the kind of lights I have around at the moment which are not great and my room is not very illuminated. I can see this battery is going to die soon as well so I think maybe I'll have a play with the sort of settings on my camera and just make it a little bit more true to life. But yes, as predicted, my camera battery did die and I think this is looking a lot better. Um, in post, I'll also try and edit it a little bit, just give it a bit of a colour grade so the footage doesn't look too dissimilar. Don't be afraid to really blend it out and take it quite high. Um, it's not unusual for the 1940s. Sometimes they would shadow very lightly all the way up to their brow. They really liked a sort of like smouldery look, you know, think film noir, think that damsel in distress or, you know, the sneaky double crossing woman. Now, unlike today, shadow under the lid, no, won't be doing that. Um, it's just about focusing on the upper eye. In terms of lashes, um, beautiful, long, luscious, thin, you know, really sticking up. That was the look. Applying like Vaseline or something quite, you know, emollient was nice for getting the lashes to stick up. Um, curling your lashes is a great thing to do at this point. I have a, don't have an eyelash curler and they don't work for me, honestly. I don't know. I think I just have, my eyes are two different shapes. I have one shape, could curl lashes perfectly. The other side, I don't know what it is, I just can't seem to, you know, if I squeeze it, I pinch my eye skin, if I manage to get my eye out of it, then it's not, it doesn't really work, I don't know. So I'm using a little Revlon Volumazing, um, I like this one because it's very sort of thin and spindly, you can get quite a long 
and spa slash you can already see what this is doing it's beautiful that sort of movie style at lash if you know what I mean so I touched on briefly in my um, 1950s video I used to do a lot more traditional makeup when I was learning um, as a teenager I sort of grew up in the pinup vintage retro style I learned as much as I could you know I was always replicating and as I've got older I've sort of moved into my own thing which is more of the vintagey gothic um, sort of take on it now just because my lashes are not great I'm just going to just dab ever so slightly that barely looks like mascara, just like a little bit of a lash. So usually they wouldn't wear mascara on the bottom lashes, but for me it's just to enhance them because they have such sad and pathetic eyelashes. So simple, 1940s eye, stunning for on the go. Like, you know a soft brown, you can't really go wrong, especially when you get the tone right. I love this one, um, incredibly expensive obviously the palette, but it's so gorgeous really working for this look. Onto the modern side I'm just going to pat that out, stop everything creasing up. Now what I like to do for this look is use a metallic brown. So I'm using this one from my Zoeva palette. As you can see very well loved. Great palette, great eyeshadow again. So just because it's metallic I am going to use a denser brush and then use a blending brush. Metallics you know, don't always look great with a light touch. So, you know, I really want to get that depth, that shine. This eyeshadow is also a lot more dramatic. It's a lot more cool toned than this brown. This is a lot more, as is the point of this video, traditional. It's looking a bit orange, but I promise it's not again. Just sort of taking this out now. It's not like we're doing a sort of like crazy winged smoky eye or anything. I just want to make sure that the shape I'm sort of developing is in line with my eye shape. You just sort of want to make your eye shape a bit bigger. I've got quite almondy eyes, so I'm just doing quite an almondy little shape there. As you can probably imagine, using like a light shade and then having these sort of really long spindly lashes just is such a gorgeous look. I will be going back in with another coat of mascara. Again, very soft blend. Don't want hard edges, even though we're not going for an authentic 1940s, you know. Just think smoky, smouldery. Be that woman in the film noir films you always wanted to be. And now since this is the modern eye, I am going to take some on my lower lash line. Just to really sort of intensify. This one metallic got that sheen a lot darker taking it on top and bottom and this one just on the top so in terms of the modern lashes i'm going to prep mine with this lash booster i was gifted by my auntie for christmas just to really help lengthen elongate it's also harder with a darker shadow to make your eyelashes really stand out And then we go back in to this side, just comb lightly through, elongating them, not clumping them. Yes, I love that. And I'll be using the same mascara since we're going for the same sort of effect. Um, honestly, I'll probably be doing falsies on this side just because it's the modern times, you know, everyone's wearing false lashes these days. Now 
as you've heard potentially a zillion times in makeup tutorial videos if that's something you usually like to watch wait for it to dry and then we can just flick it off nice and easily now for these ones I like to really wiggle it and get it a bit thicker at the bottom now next step is brows which as you can imagine as someone without eyebrows it's going to be a little trickier for me um, I actually hadn't shaved my eyebrows for a while so there was quite a shape I considered leaving them for this video my natural eyebrow shape just really wouldn't work for a 1940s look really wouldn't work for any look maybe the 1920s I don't love my natural eyebrows um, so I will be tracing them on and sort of still showing you what to do if you do have hair um, Yes. Eyebrows were very much just a rainbow sort of arch shape. I don't have any um, and recently I've been doing mine green of course because I have green hair but today um, I'm going to be matching them to the brown of my hair which is sort of a dark mousy brown. So first I'm going to start off with this uh, bronzer shade by NARS just to sketch the shape we're looking for a quite rounded with a little bit of an arch shape just gonna keep filling it in I'm using quite a thick um, angled brush in the 40s they would have used um, powders as well just to get that very soft sort of natural look I'm going in with a darker shade this is a NYX single eyeshadow which I usually use as my sort of everyday contour color I like it because it's quite cool toned I also don't have any eyebrow pencils um, because of my lack of eyebrow even when I had black hair and I was doing my black brows I was usually just using gel eyeliner not really a brow pencil I don't go for the sort of natural look in my day-to-day -day. now just sort of using fine strokes to fluff it up a bit make it look a little bit more like hair you know the key points of a 1940s look were sort of brows lips eyelashes the blush wasn't too full on the eyeshadow was kept nice and soft and of course it is much harder for me not having real eyebrows to begin with starting to wonder now if this is a little big just because I'm so used to doing my enormous eyebrows I might just take the end off and draw it a little more natural thinking a normal person eyebrow This is a bit better. Just a little bit shorter, a little bit lower. I think we've got it there. You know, if you want to think about 1940s makeup very basically, you could think no makeup, makeup with a red lip. Yeah, that's a bit more natural. That's sitting more on my brow bone, you know, the points aren't too far off where a natural eyebrow might be. Obviously not mine. Mine sort of sits like a slug on my eye socket, really is how I would describe it. Now going into the modern side, I'm going to do quite a similar shape, but we're going to darken it and lift the arch a little bit as well. always funny this bit on the comparison sort of makeup it's one of the main areas you can see the differences in the face that I'm trying to achieve see that's a lot more 
dramatic and that's what you know modern interpretations of vintage makeup is it's making it more dramatic we wear a lot more makeup these days we want a more intense look great so for the modern brow i've just taken another shade from the pat mcgrath which is this quite dark um more ashy brown and i've just as you can see the difference is it's a lot more sculpted you know I've lifted it I've made it longer I've made it closer to you know a modern eyebrow um, if you have actual eyebrows I would recommend for the traditional side you know a very light pencil go through and then some powder just make it really beautiful and sculpted for the modern side um, I'd say pencil and then a tinted eyebrow gel is really good you could really define those hairs as you might be able to see I've sort of tried to mimic hairs just because the brush the bristles on this brush are quite good for mimicking hairs I've also squared it off a little more this is quite round and this is quite square obviously if you have real eyebrows this is something you'll be able to judge while you're doing your makeup but because I've lifted this one quite a bit I want to bring my eyeshadow out further just so it makes more of an impact yeah that's doing what I'd like you know so I've got a sort of a similar ratio here as to here now on to the face um, first I'm going to be starting with blush. If you're a vintage makeup enthusiast or if you've watched my previous video, this won't be a surprise to you. Using cream or liquid blush, um, I'm just going to take lipstick. You know, it's easy, it's versatile. So we're just going to do a few dabs. Um, in the 1940s the blush was quite spread out, you know, it wasn't focused. You just wanted a light wash. It sort of came all over the cheek, from quite high up to quite low down. See, it looks a bit extreme at first when you put lipstick on your face, but it really just blends out to almost nothing. This is also when quite a liquidy foundation comes in handy. And you know, I put the oil on before, you know, it's not setting down, it's not mattifying. In the 1940s, you would use a cream product and then powder the whole face afterwards. For blush, the emphasis was on natural, you know, you didn't want people really knowing you were wearing blush. You wanted to look youthful, flushed, that sort of thing. Now for the modern side, I'm going to do only powder blush. I only really like and only wear powder blushes, so they're just what I have on hand. So, powdering. Now, in the 1940s, it would be a powder all over, usually with a powder puff. I love a powder puff, it's something I usually don't live without, but and just all over the face you don't want too heavy a hand with this because you still want kind of the luminosity of your skin peeking through not like the 1950s when it was really you know dead matte dead matte dead matte it was just light take away the shine but still preserve luminosity if you get what i mean now on the modern side, I'm going to just touch up with my sponge again, make sure everything's nice and in place. And I'm using a different powder for this. So for the traditional side, I was using a powder which is sort of a combination mix I like to do. It's using a pale pink shade, usually from Ben Nye or Revolution, and mixing it with a white. With this foundation and just sort of with, because I'm running out of my usual mix, um, I have a more yellow powder which you know honestly it is going to make the undertones of the modern and traditional side a bit different but of course they were you know in the 1940s it was mainly pinkier complexion products they didn't have you know as much of a divide on the warm and cool skin tone thing as we do now And I'm going a little heavier with this side because we can always bring it back with highlighter on the modern side. I'm just going to take a big fluffy blush brush. I'm taking quite a light shade first. 
and really washing that over. I want to go in with a slightly darker blush colour. For comparison, here's the one I was just using for the wash all over, and this is the next one I'm going to use for intensifying just a little. And for this, I just want to concentrate on the centre of the area. I'm not pulling it all the way back here, I'm not pulling it all the way, you know, to the apples of the cheeks or the nose. I just want to. There. So, do you see how I've sort of translated it on the traditional side? It's just, you know soft like a blush like a flush but then on the modern side you know it's a lot more intense for the everyday and if it's looking you know if the look does look a little too strong i'm just going to take my powder brush and blend that out because the 1940s was focusing on you know the warmth and natural look on the skin tone um in a modern interpretation we're not going to do a heavy-handed contour and i'm going to take this which I used for my eyebrows earlier and just as a bronzer warm the face as well as contouring so we come down just under the cheekbone here and then up just warming through a little bit and you can do that sort of in many areas of the face just along here getting some shadow and that helps reduce you know the starkness of the um, foundation as well. So there we have it, there are the face, general face aspects as well. Um, now of course we're going to be moving on to lips which is one of the most exciting and defining parts of a 1940s makeup look. Now for lips you might be quite familiar with the 1940s shape. It's sort of that I love Lucy, you know, very intense, wide, cupid's bow. You know, obviously the colour is red for the lipsticks. Um, they liked quite warm shades, so I've got this perfect little mini from Pat McGrath. Do you see how warm a red this is? Here's the Urban Decay F Balm lipstick, which is quite a blue red. And then this is the one I'm going to be using today. So you can really see, especially over here, this one's very blue, this one's very yellow. So back in the 1940s, you know, it would have been just a lip application with the lipstick tube. I'm personally not a lip liner person. I also just throw it on out of the tube, but it just, what works for you. But this is my natural lip line. I have quite small and shaped lips. So for the 1940s, we're going to want to go very round. It's all about sort of that half moon shape. You had it in the eyebrows, you had it in the lips, you had it in the nails. So you can see there how much I am overdrawing my lip. You don't want, you know, a very defined, like nipped in Cupid's bow. You want it to be wide. The lower lip, I'm just following my natural lip line. You know, the lip's almost like an oval with just a little notch cut out of it. You also didn't have quite a sharp point on the side. So with the modern side, I am going to take a lip liner just because, you know, this is... Ah. I see now that I've done the traditional side on the modern side. Fabulous. Can't believe I did that after all of that work. So I'm just going to take it off a little bit. The guideline shape I'm still pretty much going to use. It's just going to be bigger on the modern side. So now let's do the traditional side. So especially on my smaller, more, you know, angular, defined lips, it's really quite difficult and bizarre to overdraw so far out. For example, this is where my natural lip ends. Now onto the modern side. I am going to take a lip liner just because, you know, the 
this is a step most people take. It's more precise, you know, it's more in line with the modern way of doing things. I'm also going to slightly, slightly overdraw my lip here. And by overdraw, I mean the width. So you can see here, my mouth finishes here and my lip finishes out here. Now I'm stopping just a little bit above so that it'll be easier to connect the bottom and it'll look more natural. In the 1940s it was all about cohesion, you know, matching the undertones of your blush to the undertones of your lips to your nails as well. Um, I don't have mine painted at the moment, unfortunately. So because I went with quite a soft, you know, warm blush here, I went with quite a, a bright warm lipstick here. Now I went with more of a mauve pink on this side, so I am going to do a slightly different shade of lipstick, just a little bit darker. So I'm going to use this uh, Maybelline Gigi Hadid collaboration lipstick. This was my unsung hero of last year. I discovered these in Outlet and if I'd known how good they were before then I would have stockpiled dozens of them. This colour, Lani, is my perfect red. Now it is a little bit darker than I would like so I am just going to lighten it up with the touch of the lipstick I used on the 40s side and we're just going to sort of marry the two shades. The 1940s lips do, especially to me, feel quite, you know, cartoony, which is a lot. I usually overdraw my lips a lot, but it's the fact that we're overdrawing it out here instead of up here. Sometimes, I'm going to be honest, my cupid's bow getting scarily close to my nose. So we're down to the finishing touches, so I have just zoomed out a little bit. We're going to take the traditional side first. First all I'm going to do is blot the lipstick. It's providing quite a bit of shine at the moment, which really don't want for a 1940s look. That lipstick should be dead matte. And the other thing I want to do is enhance this freckle here, which I always do as a beauty mark. I'm just taking a soft brown shadow. And there we go. Whereas in my 1950s makeup, I would have done this with a black. I want to do it with a brown, just keeping it soft and natural. That's what the 1940s is all about. Now on the modern side, there's a few more steps. First, I'm going to take a white pencil and highlight the inner corner of my eye. And I'm also going to take this and run it on the inner lid just to really open it up. As you can see, it makes my eye look much whiter. And I'm just taking a white shadow and popping that in a corner. And with the same shadow, highlight under the brow. My final step for the modern side is false eyelashes. Now, I really like a magnetic lash. It's the only kind of lash eyelash I really wear. A little gel eyeliner pot here which has the magnetic eyeliner in it. And I'm just going to take this very carefully and gently along the lash line, grazing that lash line. I'm going to be honest, I'm not the best at this sort of magnetic lash eyeliner duo. It doesn't work as well for me as the sandwich ones, but this is all I have on hand. Just going to quickly touch up and do another coat as it recommends. Take the lash, making sure we've got the one for the right eye. The right eye being my left. These ones, the band sort of isn't quite 
as flexible so you may have to mold it a little bit and there we go perfect fit and so here are the finished looks our traditional 1940s style makeup and our modern interpretation of the 1940s style makeup. Our main takeaway points is for the traditional side, you know, the lip shape, soft eye, eyelashes popping, and just a very natural looking complexion. Then for the modern side, you know, quite a bold lip, a darker, smokier, smouldering eye, Still a very intense brow and just went a bit more extreme on the blush here and obviously got a little bit of contouring and warmth coming into the face which I think you can see quite clearly here. We also have a very full coverage look and a lot lighter on this side. And you know it's always fun to see a traditional and modern style you know you can sort of compare them and pull out which bits you do and don't like. You don't have to be authentic 100% of the time and you also don't have to adhere to all of the modern sort of makeup trends either. This one is so sort of soft and gorgeous. You can see that little bit of luminosity coming through that I've been talking about. Um, you know it's very, especially if I cover, you know it's very wartime you know I've got my Got my little headscarf on, you know, we're delicate. And then, you know, evening, full look, full coverage. It's really been fun to do both. It's been such a long time since I've done authentic makeup. So I hope this has been beneficial for you. As always, you know, feel free to leave a comment, ask me questions, anything. I love talking about this kind of stuff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.